Hey, we're on. I'd like to go ahead and welcome you to the Tuesday, September 5th, 2023 Warrenton Board of Aldermen. If you would, please rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item we have is the introduction of employees. Is each department head gonna do that hard? Police department would like to introduce uh, Zachary Carroll. Started with us uh, earlier in August. Welcome aboard. Welcome. Does it go by Zach or Zachary? Zach. Thank you and be, be safe out there. I would like to introduce a new finance clerk, Don Hayes. So Don focuses on accounts payable and business licensing. Welcome. Welcome board, Thank Don. You. Welcome, Don. <coughs> Thank you. Next, we have the consent agenda. We have the regular meeting minutes from August 15th, 2023, work session minutes from August 23rd with the planning and zoning, work session minutes from August 30th, uh, 2023 regarding homeless, we have the CIP pipe rehabilitation bid awarded to SAK in the amount of $84,426. The low bid budget amount was $100,000. And then the SALT bid awarded to Oakley St. Louis, they were the low bid. Any questions on that? No. no. I retain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as submitted. So, so moved. Second. Motion made. Roman Schultz. Second about. I'm sorry, quarter. Yeah. Roll call vote. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump is absent. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum is absent. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Motion passes four to zero with two absent. Next will be public comments. We'd like to hear from you. If you have anything you'd like to share or ask or talk to us about, please come to the podium. You'll have five minutes to speak. Just state who you are, please. One thing to say to whoever fixed Market Street Railroad Crossing, <laughs> it is wonderful. I think that was I'm the sure actual. I speak for a lot of people. It was a <laughs> railroad company, wasn't it? I, th I think that was the railroad company, and it is nice. Well, we will pass it along for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's great. It is great. You're right. We should just take credit. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should take credit for it. But I think that's a railroad. Thank you, though. Anyone else? Board of Alderman comments? Looking forward to the fall festival coming up in a couple of weeks. Agree. I'm hoping the weather stays the way it is. Yeah. Any other comments? Had the, had the house on uh, Highway 47 between Waffle House and uh, China House came down today. And did it. Okay. thank you very much. For <laughs> Getting that done. <clears throat> that is a good thing. All right, uh, we'll move on to the reappointment of Clifton Wolf and Damien <laughs> Frederick to the TIF Commission for a four year term. Any questions on those? I'll entertain a motion to reappoint the reappointment of Clifton Wolf and Damien Frederick to the TIF Commission for a four year term. So moved. Second. Motion made by. Alderman Miller, seconded by Alderman Schultz. Roll call vote. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman, sorry, Quarter? Yes. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Motion passes 4 to 0 with two absent. Uh, resolution, do we want to hold off on that for a little bit? Um, we can. She's we supposed to be here, but it's up to you guys. She may be stuck in traffic, so if we want to wait. Then I can, if she doesn't show up, I can do it. Okay, that's fine. We'll uh, we'll go ahead and table that, but we will come back to it after we get through things or when. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Uh, next will be the letter of support for the renovation of Donna Marie Apartments, um, Marie Wood, uh, Rural Housing Developer LLC. 
Yes, so what this is is a letter of support to renovate the Donna Marie part apartments out off of Highway 47. Um, what they're asking for is the support letter in order for them to apply for these MHDC tax credits. Um, they did apply for this last year, you guys might recall that. They applied for it, unfortunately they were not awarded, they did not get the award. So they're doing the exact same thing this year, um, same letter, they just needed an updated letter with a new date, um, but they're doing the same renovations. Air, heat and air, central air, um, the apply updating the appliances and all of that stuff. She is online on Zoom if you guys have any questions or need further information. I don't know that I will. I think one of the only new aldermen would be Alderman Rowmaker, and I'm not sure. I mean, with the letter, it kind of explains a lot. But this letter is required for them to reapply. Is yes. that what? It's it's encouragement or helps. It helps. The, it's like a resume review. builder, basically. Therefore, it just so. says that we're backing them and saying we'd like to see the renovation. Are the odds better this year they're they're going to be approved? I, I honestly right. think they don't know either. I think mm -hmm. it's kind of one of those things of it's, it's a shot, shot in the dark, but you go for it and all the backing helps. But the more things they get like this help. Yes. Okay. <coughs> um, any other questions? All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the mayor to sign a letter of support for the renovations of Donna Maria Apartments. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Rowmaker, seconded by Alderman Quarter. Roll call vote. Alderman Quarter. Yes. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Motion passes four to zero with two absent. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Next will be the catered liquor license for the fair board for fall festival. Uh, I think this is pretty cut and dry and they do it every year. Um, any questions? I'll entertain a motion to approve the catered liquor license for the fair board for fall festival. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Miller, second by Alderman Quarter. Roll call vote. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. This is 4 to 0 with two absent. Next we'll hear from City Administrator Brandy Walters. Good evening. The first thing that I have for you is the tourism. Um, tourism met on August 22nd and we discussed some of the Christmas decorations that are within their budget. And these two that you're seeing on the screen are the two snowflakes that they chose. We're going to alternate them throughout 30 different polls throughout the city so that way the Christmas decorations are updated. This is was part of their budget this year. Um, the next thing that they actually also did was they wanted to update flags where we used to have like the American flags. We're going to do seasons. So this is the front and the back and it shows you each season. Those will be rotated out. And then at the very end, there are some welcome to Warrington banners, and those will actually be on the new overpass out there at um, Warrington West Boulevard. Hold on, I don't know where it went to. <laughs> <laughs> What's the uh, background color of the snowflake flags? Uh, the, they're not flags, they're LEDs. actually lit up snowflakes. Oh, yeah, they're cool. actually lights. And those that's will be the welcome to Warrington. That's the welcome yes. to Warrington. The snowflake lights take the place of the the, the former wreaths that they have yes, correct the former wreaths because those are getting kind of tattered are you still wrapping the poles yes okay so the total for this budgeted item is twenty one thousand two hundred dollars for the banners and for the stuff excellent I'll entertain a motion to approve the tour tourism recommendations in the amount of $21,200. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Romaker, seconded by Alderman Quarter. Roll call vote. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Schultz? <coughs> yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Romaker? Yes. Motion passes 4 to 0 with two absent. Do you have a question? The next thing that I have for you tonight is discussion of the SROs. Um, currently, the city provides two SROs, one at the middle school and one at the high school. And the school has approached us and asked if we could provide two more at two of the elementary schools. Um, after we discussed back and forth, they, have, they are willing to pay two-thirds of the cost rather than 50%. And after I spoke with Dana, we've come up with, yes, that we could afford that in our budget, but I wanted to see if this is something that you guys would like to entertain. Well, do we have the manpower to do that? 
Well, what we would do is actually, and I've spoke with Dr. Kling and Smith about this, we won't be taking anything from our current manpower besides the two we already have there. We will actually advertise for these specific jobs and see if we can get anything for that. Start. Well, I tell you, my, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Does it start this this school year then? It would. Yeah, we would start as soon as we could get the people. I uh, I think we need to address, make sure we have plan in effect for the worst case scenario for the school if there is an event. I don't know what plan is in effect and if they practice that sort of thing. Yes, and the chief could vouch for that. They do a lot of um, active shooter training and all kinds of stuff out there. Yeah. So would that be a new position or would we use existing manpower for that? It would be new positions. So that we would we hire would advertise somebody. advertise specifically for SROs. Okay. So is there a cost analysis on that? Do they know how much more that would cost? <coughs> I don't remember the exact no. cost. I'm sorry. But going from 50% to two-thirds, two -thirds. that will help. Right. So it would help defray the cost of the extra person, correct? Yeah, around twenty twenty five thousand a year impact Additional. to us. So is that in the budget already, or do we have that? We, we would have to add to. Have we to would have to do it. a budget adjustment for that. That would be for two twenty five thousand for two. Correct. The net impact of the change of two at fifty percent to four at uh, <coughs> a third of the of the cost would be a net impact to us of twenty five. Which is pretty cost effective for. An officer, I would think. Yeah, it's, it's worth the uh, investment. For so, sure. so these officers in the in the summertime, what do, I mean, does the school is that year round they pay two thirds or? Okay, where would they be assigned during the summer? I'll let you see. I'll regular let you see patrol, I believe. Just they would have a regular patrol shift before the school started. And the school starts or any events that they may request it at, I believe we break them away to be able to handle, correct? Yeah, and typically the SROs, uh, they use their vacation in the summer, so they don't, they're not using it during the school year. And we also, I mean, we use them on a day shift so that if they're, they are still relating, if there's summer school issues or anything else, they're oh, able to respond. Yeah, absolutely. It, is SRO a <coughs> designated position, or is that open for bid to any officer? Or how does that work? Um, yeah, officers who work here now could apply for it, but they can apply for that. And would we're that trying rotate? To, would there be a rotation there, possibly, or no think, special training? Oh uh, yeah, you have to uh, attend uh, SRO school, and then what we ask of our SROs is to give us a pledge for a year. So if you want to be an SRO, it's for a year, so that we're never caught short. So if they okay. decide they don't want to do it anymore, they have to wait a year. Oh, okay. Especially That's your transition from SRO back to the road. Especially because it's a split con contractual position because the school is paying for half. They right. have to stay okay. in there for that I year. I see. Yep. Uh, but okay. then, like what Chief was saying, I think, or what he was kind of getting around to, is some people, after a year, just, that's not their cup of tea. They yep. don't like it. It, it. They've had problems or it's just not what they like doing. Then you get somebody in there who's going to be favored towards handling kids. Right. And, and interaction, which is really good because you'll see him. I mean, my kids still talk about the SROs even when they're in college. Oh, you know, remember Nick? Nick was so fun to be around. He'd always relate to us. He'd talk to us. It's just that rapport yeah. that they gain, and it's good. I just didn't know whether there would be a, a rotation type of event or not. So. Who are our two SROs right now? Probably the chief can answer. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm Maybe so not. It's uh, <laughs> Moyer and Aug. I'm sorry, who? Moyer and Aug. Thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, is there anybody that opposes it? No, if the, no. If the district's going to pay two thirds of the salary, I mean, if no, we can afford mean, it in the budget, I think we we yeah. should. Is that, that's, is that figure out how we can find it? If if not, we need to look for a way to come up with those funds. That's just and salary. With, what about the patrol cars? Are we going to have to get two extra cars? 
I think we usually give some of the older cars for them to use, don't we? Yeah, the SROs are using, um, it's basically transportation back and forth to the school. Like, how is the older Fords? Basically, they drive it from the station to the school and it parks, so. I'm patrolling in it. Do uh, we ever have any disturbances at basketball games or football games or, I know in St. Louis, uh, they've had some riots uh, by students. Recently? Recently, yeah. Uh, not recently that I've heard of here, but you know, on occasion, things, that's why they have security there. You know, sad. By and large, they're very well behaved. Good. Well, it stays that way. Yeah. So we'll bring a, I'll bring a new agreement back to you guys at the next board meeting, because we'll have to sign a new agreement and vote. Sounds great. Um, the next thing that I have for you tonight is an ordinance for the execution of turfing the ball fields, which I know everybody on. We have finally finished up this agreement with Game 7. Um, game, game 7 is going to pay up to $500,000 towards what we estimate to be a million dollar project. Um, so this is just an agreement between the city and Game 7 in order to do that. And we will turf the four main fields. Any questions on that? Who's Game 7? Who are they? I don't, I'm not familiar with them. The company that I think they approached us about being able to do some of the tournaments. Okay. The softball tournaments. What, so what benefit are they getting out of this? They're they're going to get they're going to get use of the field. How much is it? I mean, do you remember off the top of your head how much it is? The total of the turfy is approximately about. No, no, the tournaments. I mean. For them to have the tournaments. Oh, um, I don't I don't know what that cost is but they Depends have they'll have tournaments out there every weekend so this is pretty much the only way we're going to get turf field so correct on the and just to <clears throat> let the public know we discussed this in the past this isn't going to affect any of our leagues current leagues no, it's just it on the weekends not. what they will do is they'll do weekend tournaments and they have agreed with TSM that they'll use the fields one day a week okay that's in this agreement as well. I'll entertain the first reading of, and this is in a bill, correct? I'll entertain a first reading of bill number 64-23. So moved. Second. Motion made by Quarter, second by Schultz. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a project cost sharing agreement with Game 7 Baseball Incorporated for turf ball fields. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of bill number 64-23. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Rumwaker, second by Alderman Schultz. Join that's authorizing the mayor to execute a project cost sharing agreement with Game 7 Baseball Incorporated for turf ball fields. We'll call vote. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Rumwaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. They'll pass 4 to 0 with two absent. And the last thing that I have for you is a few dates for you to remember. Um, estimated time for a soft opening for the fueler was given to us today, and that's going to be, they're guessing, is September 19th, so it's right around the corner. Fall festival is September 23rd. Um, we have a work session scheduled for operations on September 26th at 5 p.m. here in this building. And cocktails and conversations will be September 27th with the Greater Warren County Economic Development Council. The place and time is unknown at this point, but I'll let you know when I get further information. Um, 27th. And just, I'm yeah, sorry? 27th. Yes. I'll run through those dates just real quickly. Sure. The Fueler, September 19th for a soft opening. Fall Festival, the 23rd. Work session, September 26th at 5 p.m. And Cocktails and Conversations is September 27th. Also, Missouri Highway Transportation Commission will be having a meeting in this building October 12th. That is at um, 8.30 is when they're arriving. The meeting will start at approximately 9 in the morning. Um, one of the things they have asked is that a city official, either the mayor or one of the aldermen, to give an introduction of them. and. I would need somebody here at 8.30 for that. And then 
also they're wanting to know if you guys would like a slot on their agenda to give your items of concern. You don't have to give me any specifics, specific items, just if you want that little spot that you can address them with any concerns. That's October 12th. The uh, work session on the 26th, was that for all of us, the yes. Board of Aldermen? Yes, for the Board of Aldermen. Mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, I didn't catch what you said about the 19th. I heard you say it twice. Fewer, Mr. Fewer, the South Fewer. Fewer. New gas station. Oh, okay. They're going to have okay. a soft opening on the 19th. Okay. As of right now. All right. That's all that I have for you. I assume you'll send us a notice to write me for it. Absolutely. All right. Before we get to Dana, Dana let's. Yeah, ice the kicker. Feel bad. Uh, let's go with resolution number 343. Joy, if you want to. Joy, if you want to. Come on front and we'll talk about the resolution. Did you push me back? We <laughs> did. It's oh right. my God. It's it's been, okay. It was a rough ride here, I'll tell you. Do we need a third lane coming out this way? Uh, maybe. <laughs> it's like I always did an accident on 70, but tonight was particularly bad. It just, the traffic just was stopped. <laughs> Two lanes closed. Uh -oh. <laughs> but anyway, I'm here, so I'm happy. <laughs> Um, so what we're talking about tonight is um, not the passage of the bond issue, but selection of the purchaser underwriter for the bonds. And um, where we ended up the last time, I think, is that we were starting the process. We went out to get a rating. We got a really good rating. We also got bond insurance on top of it. So the rating on your bonds is going to be AA rated. We went out for a request for proposal and we got I'm thinking it's six. Just nope. We got five proposals, which is a real good number, and um, the best proposal, based on underwriting fees and interest rates, uh, is from Hilltop Securities. That rate is not fixed yet. It doesn't get fixed until the time of sale, but they offered what's called an index rate. There's a published index that changes every single day, and when we get to the date of sale, the rates. Um, will go up or down from what their proposal is based on the index. And not all of the firms agreed to index at all. Some of the firms just said the rates will be what their rates are when they decide they're going to price it. <laughs> so that was a really good proposal. So um, the resolution that you're passing tonight, um, it approves what's called the official statement in substantially final form. We can still make changes. And that's the document that the underwriter is going to use to market the bonds. Um, and the main thing in this resolution is that it does select Hilltop Securities as the underwriter of the bonds. And that's really all I had to say. <laughs> I'm happy to have said it. I'm happy I got here. <laughs> have you ever seen me so happy? Oh. <laughs> Anybody got any questions for Joy? Do you know anything about Hilltop or... or oh. I did forget to tell you something. Hilltop Securities was the underwriter on your last issue. So they were very excited to be doing this again. And we know from their past experience that they perform and do what they say. Always a reason. Yeah, that's always a reassurance. For sure. All right, I'll entertain a pro. Oh. Sorry. I'll entertain a motion to approve the reading of resolution number three, 340. So moved. 343. Second. Motion, yeah, 343, I'm sorry. Thank you for the correction. Motion made by Alderman Miller, second by Alderman Schultz. The resolution of the Board of Aldermen of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, selecting an underwriter and authorizing certain preliminary actions in connection with the proposed issuance by the City of its Combined Waterworks and Sewerage System Revenue Bonds Series 2023. Do you need a roll call vote? Do a roll call vote. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Romaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Resolution passes 4 to 0 with two absent. Uh, the only other thing I might add, and I think I just put away what I needed, here it is, is that I will be back here 
um, on September 19th. That's our date of sale when you'll have all the documents to approve. Well, you'll have to go get a burrito at the fueler. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> They'll be open. <laughs> Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, now we are from Finance Officer Dana Blaska. Good evening. Uh, you have before you the July financials, so the first uh, period of our new fiscal year, so just one month's worth of data. Not really much going on to outside of what we budgeted just yet. So you see the general fund had about 7000 higher in uh, revenue uh, than we anticipated. Uh, kind of a mixture. We had a little extra in, in special events for the fall festival coming in early. Pool was a little higher than budgeted. Permits slightly higher. While we had franchise tax and sales tax, which is slightly lower. So again, nothing too dramatic in that uh, first period. On the general fund operating expenses, they came in about 58000 below budget. Uh, police had some vacancies, about 17000 uh, grounds and maintenance had some uh, $10,000 worth of supplies, uh, items that just haven't been spent yet. So just a timing issue there. In the transportation fund, you'll notice that expenses were about $17,000 below budget. And again, just supplies and things uh, just weren't spent in that first period that were anticipated. Water and sewer fund revenues, $28,000 above budgeted amount for that first period and operating expenses for the water and sewer fund, about 45000 below budget. Um, just really across uh, maintenance and supply type accounts, again, just haven't had the reason to spend all that just yet. So were there any questions regarding those July financials? Okay. And again, I just remind you that uh, at the end of the report are the listing of all items that were paid uh, checks written during the month of July. So again, if you guys ever have questions on those, please let me know. Thank you. Yeah. Well, excellent. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from City Clerk, Melody Roop. So at the last meeting, we had the public hearing to annex the 337 acres north of the West Warrenton Boulevard. There have been no objections, so this is the bill to pass the annexation of the 337. Any questions on that? Well, entertain a motion <coughs> to, for the uh, first reading of bill number 63-23. So moved. Second. Motion made by the quarter, second by Miller. In ordinance annexing a certain unincorporated area contiguous to the city limits of the city of Warrenton, Missouri and generally located north of the Northwest Service Road and West Warrenton Boulevard into the city of Warrenton, Missouri without further action. Entertain a motion for the second reading of bill number 63-23. So moved. Second. Motion made by Schultz. Second by Romwicker. In ordinance annexing a certain unincorporated area contiguous to the city limits of the city of Warrenton, Missouri and generally located north of the Northwest Service Road and West Warrenton Boulevard into the city of Warrenton, Missouri without further action. We'll call vote. Alderman Romaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Bill passes four to zero with two absent. Next we'll hear from Aquatics Director Lisa Kramer. Good evening. You should have in front of you the uh, aquatic uh, report for August. Um, some highlights from that report are that we had 2,349 people come through the doors last month. We sold 23 new memberships and renewed five. We sold also 27 insurance memberships. Um, so, uh, co that was a combination of renewals and new, uh, renew active and silver sneaker memberships. The last two weeks of August, we spent draining the indoor pool and cleaning the entire aquatic facility inside. We reopened this past Saturday, both the outdoor and indoor pool. We had our last day for the outdoor pool this past Monday, and we will be putting the cover on the outdoor pool next Monday. Um, our fall hours started today, so we're back to closing during the day at noon 
and reopening at four Tuesday through Friday since the kids are in school and we don't have any lifeguards per se to be there. A few upcoming programs, September 18th through the 24th, we are doing back to school at the pool and giving $2 off admission if they bring in school supplies. And then we will be giving the school supplies to the area schools within the school district. September 23rd, we are closing, so we encourage everybody to go to the fall festival. And October 7th is our Splish Splash Birthday Bash to celebrate the fifth year of the pool being open. We will have free admission, free birthday cake, and selling discounted memberships that day. Any questions on the report? Nope. Make a note of the birthday bash. What day was that birthday bash? October, October 7th. 7th. October 7th. And then the next item I have is we're looking for approval for our ADA door openers. The project was budgeted for $21,000. The only bid we received came from Negwer Door Systems for $21,365. If approved, we'll take the $365 out of the repair maintenance line. Any questions? I'll entertain a motion to award the ADA door openers at the Aquatic Center bid to Negwer Door Systems. Is it Negwer Door Systems in the amount of twenty one thousand two hundred sixty five dollars? The only bid. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Quarter. Second by Alderman Schultz. Roll call vote. Alderman Miller. Yes. Alderman Schultz. Yes. Alderman Quarter. Yes. Alderman Rowmaker. Yes. Motion passed. This is four to zero. Two absent. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Ground and Maintenance Director Justin Knoll. Good evening, Mayor and Board. Uh, you have our report for August. Uh, it's been interesting. Hot, hot uh, August, I guess, but we made it through with all of, uh, the air conditioners running fully. Uh, kind of a bigger note for this uh, month, Ameren uh, is going to be area working on their lines uh, trimming trees and removing dead trees and stuff so it's kind of a nice note for the public they should have received something in the mail from them but just to uh, you know have trees in their area that are questionable uh, to be reaching out to Ameren to come up with a resolution for those uh, trees along the utility lines and that our, our crews just continue we're working on uh, still pushing back uh, brush lines along the city streets and alleyways uh, we're just about up to 70 working on our working our way north um, and preparing for the fall festival coming up here in a few uh, short weeks with some electric uh, upgrades on main street that'll be your busy time busy busy yeah any questions um i have one question i did is it a citywide thing that Ameren is replacing the gas meters? I got a letter from Ameren that said they were going to shut our gas off for temporarily to replace a meter. Does that make, have you heard of that? I'm not too sure of the, the gas meter upgrades. I know they had something sent out uh, a few months ago about the electric meters being upgraded to smart okay. meters. But as far Maybe as it gas, was electric. It, 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 that's that's uh, citywide though? I would imagine uh, probably county and you know within their county service way. area, most of the people are everyone's getting up to upgraded yeah, meters. Them as well. I don't think I, I I don't think they've done that yet though. Have no, they? I think they were uh, last time I checked, they were just sending people around, like okay. a, a worker around uh, addressing it if there was any concerns, and then uh, leaving some paperwork on the door saying okay. that they've been there and they were going to be doing it in the near future. So I'm sure they're going to try and do it before. Winner. I'm sure they wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> but okay, that was my only question. Yeah, Justin, I'd just like to say thanks to you and your team for uh, all the hard work they did on South 47, cleaning out the ditches. Uh, I know the weeds were getting pretty tall. Sure makes it uh, look a lot nicer coming in from the south. So appreciate the guys' hard work, ladies' hard work. So thanks. All right. Next, we'll hear from Public Works Director Guy Jeevers. Good evening, Mayor and Board. Uh, first time I have it, my monthly report. Uh, we had a six inch water main valve that needed to be replaced, a two inch water main valve on Middletown, uh, did a couple water shutoffs and replaced a culvert pipe on Vasho. We had two sewer calls, 
both of them are on private. Any questions on that? No. So if you've noticed that um, we got an engineering coming out on Main Street that's been doing some surveying to check uh, points for upgrading the sidewalk and that. So you'll see crews out there. Um, the water line on Boone Slick that went out for bid last week, bid opening on that's the 14th. Notice to proceed will be October 2nd. Um, we also had, uh, we did in-house CDO training. We had a total of six that passed and two of them were from grounds and maintenance so everybody does have their CDO and ready for winter. Next time I have is uh, the treatment plant building insulation bid, the Seavers construction for the uh, only bid for the amount of $17,300. Budget amount was $16,000. I'm, I'm asking to reallocate from the lawnmower equipment of 1300 we are under budget on the more so I'm asking for approval for that okay. anybody have any questions on that any motion to award the treatment plant building insulation bid to CV construct is it CV is that correct construct contractors in the amount of 17300 the only bid so moved second made by Alderman Schultz seconded by Alderman Corder We'll call vote. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Romaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Which passes four to zero with two mm -hmm. <clears throat> Next item I have is um, an, uh, two ordinances. Uh, these are the for the agreement with SCI Engineering and with MoDOT to approve for approval to oversee the construction, testing, and inspection for the TAP grant. There's two of them because phase one and phase two are two separate TAPS grants, so they have to be done separate, and that's for the sidewalk along Veterans Memorial from for stormwater structures, pipes, new curb and gutter, and sidewalk. Phase one's going to run from Market Street to the shops of the entrance, and phase two is the shop entrance to Rural Kings. Uh, it was two separate grants. So we have to do the first phase with one grant and then the second phase with the other grant. That's why there's two of them there. And those will be bills on the, on the agenda, correct? I'm sorry? Yes. There will be bills on the agenda. That's through MoDOT. I mean, that's, we have <laughs> grant money. Yes. All right. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 61-23. Someone. Second. Quarter second, Bob Romaker. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement for professional engineering services with SCI Engineering Incorporated in connection with Old Highway 40 sidewalk extension, tap number 9900393, phase one. Continue motion for a second reading of bill number 61 23. Second. Motion made by Alman Schultz, second by Alman Miller. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement for professional engineering services with SCI Engineering Incorporated in connection with Old Highway 40 sidewalk extension, tap number 9900393, phase one. Welcome. Vote. Alderman Corder? Yes. Alderman Romaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Bill passes four to zero with two absent. Entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 62-23. So moved. Second. Order second by Alderman Romaker. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement for professional engineering services with SCI Engineering Incorporated in connection with Old Highway 40 sidewalk extension tap number 9900399, phase two. Uh, in a motion for the second reading of bill number 62 23. We'll move. Second. Miller, second by Alderman Schultz. An ordinance authorizes the mayor to execute an agreement for professional engineering services with SCI Engineering Incorporated in connection with Old Highway 40 sidewalk extension, tap number 9900399, phase two. A vote. Alderman Romaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Bill passes four to zero with two absent. Anything else? That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Next we'll hear from Chief of Police, Larry Eller. Good evening. I just have one item for you. 
and that would be uh, we're seeking approval for general order 01-23 it's a new policy and it's to keep compliance with the latest CALEA standard in a nutshell it is a written policy requiring us to as a department to disclose any exculpatory evidence in the case Brady disclosure Brady any questions on that Entertain a motion to approve the Brady Disclosure Requirement Policy. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Corder, seconded by Alderman Schultz. Roll call vote. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Corder? Yes. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Motion passes 4 to 0 with two absent. Anything else, Chief? No, sir. All right. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Who is the first one? So, Alderman Corder, seconded by Alderman Schultz. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. We are so adjourned, folks.